you can customize your site pages any way you want, whether you create a site from a blank canvas or start with a template. In this lesson, we'll go over some elements like text and images and their responsive behaviors. Let's get into it. This section contains different elements and layout tools like grid and stack that we'll cover a bit later. But for now, let's focus on their default responsive behaviors. Just like sections in our previous lesson, text elements are also set to scale proportionally by default. So if you resize the canvas, the text element will also respond. And you can see the pixel on canvas value changing over here in the inspector when you move to different breakpoints. Also, you can manually change your font sizes here in the inspector, or resize it proportionally by dragging the corner handles. You can also set your text to wrap, meaning the text will stay the same size and the bounding box width will resize according to the parent as the viewport gets smaller, making the text wrap. That also means the bounding box height will increase to accommodate the text inside. With fixed, you set one pixel size for the bounding box, and whatever size you set on text will remain fixed. They'll both stay the same size across all screen sizes. When you choose Hug, the text boundary box will always hug the content inside. Also with Hug, you'll see this toggle for scale text. Turning this on or off determines whether the text will scale across screen sizes or stay fixed. Under the toggle, there are settings for the text, you can also find these text scale settings under Scale Proportionally. Right now, you'll see the text is set to Auto. This means it is set to Scale Proportionally, so if you adjust the screen size with these handles, the font size will rise and fall with the size of the screen. And you'll see the font's pixel value changing here if you move to other breakpoints. On some screen sizes, the text might be too big or small, so you can set some maximum and minimum font sizes here too. Now, the text will scale up or down in proportion to the screen size until the font hits its minimum pixel size. If you switch this to custom, the text will scale within your custom range from the highest breakpoint to the lowest. This is especially useful when you're working with text and layout tools like Stack where you might not want the text to scale too small on lower breakpoints, but you're happy for it to wrap. If you remove this title text from the stack and then attach it to the cell, the cell becomes its new parent. We'll cover stacks and grids in more detail later on. You'll know it changed when the breadcrumbs over here show the element's parent is the cell instead of the stack. The same will happen if we reattach the title to the stack. Next, to change an image, just click on it and go to your site files or Wix media. If your image doesn't quite fit the set boundaries, it'll automatically be cropped to fill the available space. But if you want to be a bit more precise, you can change the width and height values in the inspector. While you're here, you can also change its distance from the left side of its parent container with the X value and its distance from the top with the Y value. Let's undo and bring back the design we had with the previous image. And just like text and sections, images are set to scale proportionally by default too. But there are other responsive behaviors you can play around with here, like fixed, where the element keeps its set size on every screen and breakpoint, and stretch, where elements fill their parent container. You can see these behaviors in preview and on your live site across different screen sizes. All right. So we've covered how to structure and customize your basic sections and text and image elements. In our next lesson, we'll get a bit more dynamic with global sections. I'll see you there.